Exciting news out of the GNOME project. We've now been introduced to the GNOME project handbook, a great and comprehensive resource to help you navigate the GNOME project for existing and new contributors. A lot of people have been asking for something similar to this, and today we finally get the handbook. So let's read about the handbook real quick and talk about the intended audience and purpose of this, especially for newcomer contributors. So the GNOME Project Handbook is a site that contains all the information needed to participate in the GNOME Project. It is intended for both new and existing GNOME contributors. And if you are new to GNOME, the handbook is a great place to learn about GNOME works, including what each of the teams does, how to access GNOME development platforms, and how to communicate with other project members. If you are already contributing to GNOME, this handbook is where you will find essential reference information, such as the development schedule, details of events, and how to apply for travel sponsorship. AKA, this is going to be a great resource for new and old members and contributors, and is exciting because we get more centralized info on the project. This now has become a comprehensive source for information on people trying to contribute to GNOME. This was definitely something sought after by the Linux community, where I've seen many people make comments about how they can start contributing. Well, you're going to look at the handbook first, which is going to be in the description below. Check out the link so you can go through the handbook and start learning how to contribute today. And of course, with the breakdown of this centralized information, such as how to get in touch, project news, teams, governance, foundation infrastructure, release planning, development, testing, issue tracking, maintainers, and events, we get a more accessible GNOME community as well as contribution information because this really will streamline the contribution process. With detailed guides and references, this handbook could potentially give us a more efficient and effective collaborative experience, meaning hopefully more impactful contributions and a primer for newcomers. We'll talk about the community sentiment in a moment, but let's keep going through the handbook real quick. Other documentation, the GNOME handbook provides a project level contributor documentation. Other types of documentation are, av are available elsewhere. If you need other documentation, you can get it at apps.gnome.org, welcome.gnome.org, developer.gnome.org, gitlabgnome.org, and it tells you the varying different topics that each of them cover. If there are issues and corrections, make sure to post them in the reporting issues section and propose new improvements. You can read the README on information on how to actually contribute to the GNOME Project Handbook. But let's check out some of the categories and subcategories here. So what we get is access to the matrix or discourse channel. We talk about Planet GNOME, which is the GNOME Project News. Teams gives you the varying different teams and members of the GNOME Project. Governance talks about how decisions are made. And then some of the things that people are going to be most interested in is development including things like changing a submission, committing messages, building, building with the toolbox, and legal information. Following that, you get into testing and how to test and where testing is performed. And finally, issue tracking. So you can track those issues that are inevitably going to show up while programming for GNOME. Definitely take a look at this. But the best way to start is to go back to the GNOME project handbook. Unless you have something specific to search for, you can definitely do it over here. But in the meantime, you can use the handbook by going through each section and then going to the next section that they believe is most important by just hitting the next button at the very bottom of the screen. Very good. So community sentiment. In recent discussions in varying communities, the project handbook has been met with positive sentiment because one, it provides the necessary comprehensive documentation in order to contribute to GNOME and the GNOME project, giving developers a great place to start. And it covers a broad array of topics such that we talked about things like management, accounts, release processes, developmental guidelines. And this is all in a part of an effort to broader and streamline the GNOME's documentation and community resources for the Linux community. Another great thing for the community is the planned retirement of the GNOME wiki. This will serve as a shift towards a more structured and accessible documentation for new contributors. The community will be encouraged to migrate over as the handbook progresses. So it will be nice to have a replacement for the wiki. That way we have a smooth transition, which maintains the availability of information for contribution. And the hope of this is to effectively increase contribution to GNOME. And if they can successfully use this resource, 
as a way to guide new developers and contributors to the nuances of actually contributing to the GNOME project, this will be a great welcome for all. The overall sentiment here seems to be optimistic. The community is showing their appreciation for a structured and well-detailed document or handbook and is happy to have received this. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Are you going to contribute to the GNOME project? If you are, let us know where you plan to start. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in another video. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.